So we're here today with two members of an interesting organization that I frankly had not heard of until one of them told me about it. Uh, Kathy Miles and Dan Nolette are from Boyle County, and they're here to talk to us about something called Resilient Boyle, which resilient is one of my favorite words anyway. So Dan and Kathy, welcome to the state of Kentucky. Great. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. So, Kathy, why don't you tell us briefly what Resilient Boyle is all about? Sure. Uh, a community organization born originally out of uh, the Garden Club of Danville, the mm -hmm. Conservation Committee, uh, which was looking for ways to address uh, advocacy and education around climate change. Uh, so we began in new November 2022, just starting to uh, from a local perspective. So mm -hmm. starting to look at what was currently being done, uh, what did people understand locally about how we were locally being affected already by climate change, and then what still needed to be done on an ongoing basis, obviously, as, as things um heated up, so to speak. I think it's yeah, fascinating that it came out of the Garden Club. These are often people who are very much in touch with what's happening weather-wise, climate-wise, because obviously it affects their gardening efforts. So I think that's really interesting. How many active, every organization has members, but how many active members would you say you have? So we have about uh, nine or 10 uh, active uh, members. This is a loosely constructed organization. We we don't at this point have bylaws. Uh, we are not a 501c3. Uh, everyone in the group pretty much represents other groups hmm. who have an interest in this topic. So we're we're kind of representing uh, a lot of groups in the community, even though we're a fairly small group. Point, yeah. The point, Bruce, is uh, we kind of link across multiple organizations. So mm -hmm. like the Garden Club is one, but you know, representation there includes uh, county government, uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Planning and Zoning, Board of Adjustments. They're all kind of part of that crew. Wow. So you've got actually governmental agencies and, and the chamber and so on and so forth involved. That's great. Do they do they have yes. problems with the idea of facing the climate crisis or are they really on board? I would have to say our the, the people who attend our meetings know that there are people who might have problems with uh, understanding and addressing it, but the people who attend are on board to know that we need to be doing more and we need our community to to see this as our local issue that we should continue to address. So Dan, how did you get involved? Well, I, I got involved through basically planning and zoning. I'm kind of the, I'm on the planning commission mm -hmm. in uh, the, in the city as, as a city of Danville rep. Um, but I got invited by, one of the members uh, to participate in a project called uh, Solarize Boil, which is trying to advocate for more uh, so rooftop solar homeowners and small solar installations. Mm -hmm. Thinking about how do we make our our community more energy resilient in that sense, um, and so there was already a link with uh, Preston Miles, who's a retired uh, center professor, Kathy's husband, um, and he's tied into the Kentucky Solar Energy Society okay. that is sponsoring these things. Uh, they did uh, Louisville and Lexington and Frankfurt in the past. Um, so this is this. He asked me, would we would I be willing to join him in this effort? Preston and I are the local lead guys for Solarize Boyle. Um, and it's our first year, 2024. Okay. Boil on the surrounding uh, seven counties, surrounding six counties. Okay. So, Kathy, there's 
education and there's mitigation and there's advocacy. Uh, which of those do you think your group mainly works on or all three? We are, we have been educating ourselves. So mm -hmm. we started knowing that we are uh, forging a path that has not been forged before um, in our community and not many communities as far as we can tell across the country to have a group particularly inland, there are groups across the country along the coasts, but to have a group in a, a place like Danville, Kentucky, that really wants to stay on a long-term problem like this, but really we don't have many models. So we've been educating ourselves um, pretty much until early this year. So we've done things like tour the, wa the local water plant to ask about uh, water situations in emergencies uh, to look at capacity. Uh, we've invited the hospital, which happens to be involved in a strategic planning process right now. Mm. So we've talked at the hospital about how do you look at health care issues in the future. Uh, disaster management. We, uh, we've educated ourselves, begun to do that on, on whether we're really ready, our county's ready for some of the disasters like flooding and significant storms, uh, as well as power outages. What are we ready for? And we learned from that one, we had a quick initiative that came out of that. We learned that a lot of people just don't have lists, don't have, there's not, they, there wasn't a central list available to them of what were their emergency numbers that they needed to be able to call. So we actually, our extension office, who's a part of, they're, they're a part of this group as well. That's where we meet. And we have two of their staff members who are part of us. And mm. they, they were able to develop some refrigerator that we've been uh, sharing with the community about what are those emergency numbers. Education has been what we've done, tried to do for ourselves as well as educating ourselves on what works with mm -hmm. educating the public, particularly when they're resistant people. But I'd have to say, given that we're in the process of a comprehensive plan for land use in this community, Advocacy is a big part of what we are trying to do, as well as education, as well as uh, mitigation. So, Dan, what are the climate crisis problems that you think are particularly facing Danville? Well, well I think we, we highlighted a couple things as we started to dig into the information. Um, one, uh, Chamber of Commerce kind of had highlighted for us the housing shortage and particularly workforce housing uh, our community is uh, growing has added uh, jobs but not added as much housing as we've added jobs and so we have a, a net influx of people driving from outlying counties into boil mm. um, and you know if you think about the potential for in migration in particularly in our areas from coastal areas mm -hmm. that's something we've been pulling out or researching we're trying to think well what would happen if we grew by you know a thousand households or or five thousand people what would it look like what would it feel like mm -hmm. and as kathy said that's that kind of fits into where we're thinking with the comprehensive plan updates that we're in the middle of right now does danville have much risk from flooding we do in certain parts of the county uh, have had a uh, some significant flooding in western Boyle County uh, in the Knob region. Uh, so we you know, it, it it differs for for different parts of the county, even though we're a relatively small county. I have tried in the past, uh, even just recently, to talk about agriculture and rain. And what does it look like if you get less rain but in a summer, but more of it at one time? Uh, so instead of having a shower of half an inch once a week, you go three weeks with no rain and then have three inches in one day. So for agriculture, that has obvious implications. Uh, does that affect 
the town the, does is your water and you mentioned the water system is the water and sewer system uh capable of dealing with that kind of runoff no i was gonna say that was one of our questions and dan can tell you when we visited the water plant uh but it continues to be a one reason we needed a uh, extension involved in this very much is is because of we have one one of the people in our farm agent and and he is the one who works with farmers on these very issues so it's really important that that they be represented in this group and i think there's a difference perhaps between the city and the adjacent areas and mm -hmm. their ability to deal with flooding versus the outlying areas and the more rural parts of Boyle County, where I think that that's really becomes an issue. Um, you know, you have uh, roads that flood or farms that, you know, as you mentioned, are going to have to deal with um, less frequent rain, maybe the same volume, but right. you know, the frequency is going to be different. I'm impressed, really, that you have government officials and the chamber and so on and so forth involved. What about your surrounding counties? Do their does their leadership have any interest, or are or do they tend to just poo poo the whole problem? That's a great question because the whole issue of regionalization is really coming up with our economic development mm -hmm. uh, corporation in Danville. Uh, we have not dealt with that directly i don't know dan i don't know if you know i don't know if our we've not heard that our local surrounding counties have a similar organization i don't think that they do yeah, but we've regional done a, regional issues are more, and more right we've done i think we feel like it would be useful to do more regional but at the same time i th I, I think the sense is the other counties are not as open to that discussion, particularly when you think about, you know, the the words climate change trigger for some people. <laughs> so we, we have to figure out how do we talk about climate um, in terms of extreme weather and how do we talk about it in a way that is not so threatening to some people or doesn't get into the politicization of things that we've seen in, you know, it, uh, across the country. Yeah, I, 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 I'm sympathetic to that issue uh, to some extent. I also, being uh, the advocate that I am, I also want to say, well, guess what? The weather doesn't care about your politics. And, you know, it's going to rain on the on the red and the blue, as it were. Mm -hmm. So but I think there's I think there's a, a way to be effect, maybe more, more effective in our communications just mm -hmm. by perhaps changing some of the words that we use and emphasizing, as, as Kathy said at the be in the beginning of our discussion, emphasizing the local impact and local issues. You know, yeah, there's, there's a national issue. Yeah, we have to do a worldwide ac action about this, but we can build up from local. So I really like the use of the term extreme weather because I think most people... If you say that, they'll go, well, yeah, I we're seeing extreme weather. We're yes. past the point, for the most part, of prevention, and we're into the point of preparation and, and mitigation. Uh, do you see that people are open to talking about how do we prepare for the future and even more, how do we prepare for the future of our children? I think lots of people are open. I think we've found that, Dan, wouldn't you say? Yeah, uh, very much so. And I, think. and I also think just at one of the things I think we're doing at, at, at this early stage still of this group is just to ask questions, just to go to meetings like uh, to talk to healthcare folks, to go to our conference and plan community meetings and just ask the question. So are we thinking ahead as we do a plan about what could happen from as a result of these changes. Mm -hmm. uh, because some people just don't think about how there's so many areas of your life that are being affected by this. So asking questions is 
is probably more powerful than I think any of us realized until we kind of got into this. Would you, what would you say about that, Dan? Yeah, I, I, I think that's fair. I think, you know, as, as I look at where we're going in the uh, update to the comprehensive plan, we've been able to elevate that goal of being resilient um, mm -hmm. and building in community resilience as one of the key goals and objectives in the comprehensive plan. So, you know, talking about it and kind of educating ourselves and educating others, that that got in, that's getting into the uh, the planning function. So we'll see how we include that in the objectives that come as the next step following the, the goal. Excellent. Resilience is one of my favorite topics, one of my favorite words. Uh, when I was teaching in a corporation, we talked about having resilient organizations, resilient teams, even resilient software, meaning that it's able to it's able to survive and even thrive in the midst of change. So trying to have a resilient community means change is coming and we have to uh, be ready to deal with it. In terms of questions, I wrote an article years ago about is Louisville ready for climate change? And I'll put a link to that below this video on YouTube and on our site. And perhaps that will be information you can use when you go to these meetings. I'm very excited about your organization. I, I love local organizing. I love seeing people step up and say, this is something we need to deal with. We can't just sit back. Uh, everybody talks about the weather, but nobody does anything about it. And you're doing something. And and I applaud you. Uh, I keep us uh, keep me informed of how things are going because I I probably will want to talk to you again in the fall and see how the group is going and what what other actions you've taken. We would. We got some things we're talking about that we could probably share by then. So and thank you for sending that link. Kathy Miles and Dan Nolet, thank you both for being on the state of Kentucky and thank you for forming and guiding and growing resilient boil. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bruce.